Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle. I'd like to illustrate an idea that is difficult but central to option pricing models and that's called risk neutral valuation. I'd like to do it with a single step binomial tree right here and I've adapted an example from John Hull's book chapter 11 on binomial trees. We're doing option pricing so as usual we need some input assumptions. I made these up. Stock price of 10, strike price of $10, that's also the exercise price we call that. U is the size of an up jump. D is the size of a down jump. I just made up 1.2 for up, 0.8 for down. A riskless rate here denoted by R of 4% and we need the length of time between the nodes in our binomial tree. I'm going to use three months or one-fourth of a year. We're only going to do a single step so that just means today is time zero and we'll go forward one step in the tree to three months. So here is the price of that European call option under the risk-free world assumption. And just to show you how that works, the stock price here starts at $10 and the binomial idea is that it can go either up to 12 or down to 8. 12 I got by multiplying 10 by U, my assumption for the size of an up jump or up step. 1.2 times 10 is 12. D is 0.8, so if I don't go up, I'm going to go down with the stock in green to 8. That's the stock price. We're talking about the call option. So what's the value of the call option? If the stock goes up to 12, it's going to be $2. It's in the money by 12 minus 10 or $2. If the stock goes down to 8, the option has a strike of 10, so it's underwater. The option can't have a negative value, and so it's going to have a value of 0. So what we have here under this elegant binomial approach is two possible va future values for the stock option. And then we just apply time value of money concepts to get the price of the option. We only have to do two things. There's two future outcomes, so we just take a weighted average. It's not quite the average, which would be one dollar would be a simple average. It's averaged by the probability that each happen. And it happens to be here that the probability under this risk-free world of an up step here is a little bit above 50% or 52.5%. I'm not going to go into the math of that. It's a function of U and D. If we don't go up, we're going to go down with probability of 1 minus P or a little bit less than 48%. So we take a weighted average of those two outcomes and that'll give us the expected future value of the option, the, val the option value in three months. So we know we need to discount that to the present. That'll get us a dollar and four. And just to show you, here's the weighted average part and then here's the discounting exponential function of negative a rate that's that's continuous compounding or really continuous discounting here and I'm discounting at R or four percent the riskless rate so that just confirms that I am indeed here in the risk-free world we're discounting these future expected values at a riskless rate to compute the price of the stock option here it's a little bit above a dollar and so in addition to being elegant the first or tech second time you see this you might think wait a second you just computed the price in an assumption of the risk-free world that's not realistic this is a stock you expect it to return more than four percent and you're right the counterintuitive idea of the risk neutral valuation is that even though you're right we can still use this option in the real world which has risk so to compare on the left I'm going to keep that risk free world and here on the right is the risky world the real world so to speak and this should be time note of 0.25 okay so we still have the stock going at starting at 10 today and going up to 12 or down to 8. So we still have a future intrinsic price on the stock under the binomial of either 2 or 0. Let me just change the discount rate to 4% so it's consistent with the risk-free world. Now in the real world let's try to make a more realistic assumption. In the risk-free world we said the probability of an up jump is about 52.5% 
And let's just to say, I'm just making this up, that in the real world where there is risk, we think the probability of the stock going up is 60%. That means we expect the future stock price to be $10.40. And then if I just compute the implied return on our stock here, I can just take the natural log of that $10.40 divided by the $10 that I started with. And by saying that the probability of an up jump is 60%, I'm implying that in the real world where there is risk, I expect the stock to return 16%. So that's quite a bit more than our riskless rate of 4%. And now what happens is I'm going to have more weight, the 60% applied to the 2. So on a weighted average, I'm going to get more than I get on the risk-free world. And then I'll discount that back still at the 4%. And I do, in fact, get an option price that's higher. So you can see here, because I increased the probability the chance that we go up and then discount and then I do the same discounted value here I do in fact get an option price that's higher the thing is though I committed a fallacy I discounted it at the risk free risk free rate and I can't really do that because if I'm going to go over here to the risky world and treat the asset as having a higher expected return I then need to acknowledge that it's a risky asset and I can't use a discount rate that's the riskless rate. I can't take a stock and discount it to the present value at a rate that implies it's more like a treasury. What rate should I use? Well, I can actually figure that out here with GoalSeek by setting this option value equal to the option value on the left, $1.04. This looks circular, but I'm only using it to figure out what the correct discount rate is. And I'm going to change it here. Solver tells me that the discount rate here of, if I put in 57%, that would give me an option value of $1.04 equal to what I got on the left. And so, okay, to find the discount rate, it was circular, but the point remains. Now what I've done on the right is I still have a higher expected return on the stock. Probability of an up jump of 60% implies an expected return on the stock of 16%. So I do have a I do have a higher expected future value of the stock option. This is true. That's a difference here on the real world on the right. However, the key thing is if I'm going to do that, I need to discount use it use a higher discount rate to get back to the present. In this case it should be 57 percent. And I will get here an option price on the right of a dollar and four which is equal to the option price on the left. And again the key thing is if I'm going to shift over here to the real world and assume that the stock has an expected return that's higher than the riskless rate I need to be consistent and use a discount rate that's also higher than the riskless rate. And when I do that, I will find that the price of the option in the risky world is the same as what I got in the risk-free world. Put another way, I'm okay per the idea of risk-neutral valuation to compute the option price over here and then assume it's going to be valid in the risky world. And so that's the uh, idea of risk-neutral valuation. This is David Harper, the Bonnet Turtle. Thanks for your time. <music>